Ashley, I'm going to start with a question. Who watched Downton Abbey last night? You did. You did. Who watched Downton Abbey? Who's familiar with Pride and Prejudice? All of you. All right. How about uh, the custom of the country? All right. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that today. Tell me what you know about Pride and Prejudice or Downton Abbey. No spoiler alert. Yes, no spoilers. Just the the overarching concept. Okay. Uh, Go back to first. The first daughters season. cannot inherit. The daughters can't inherit. So what do they have to do? Marry. 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 Right. They have to marry someone who's eligible to inherit. They can't marry someone who's not. And I don't know all the reasons for that, but that's why. Exactly. <laughs> so the parents want their daughters to maintain their status, correct? Or better. Or better. What Six about Pride and Prejudice? Yeah. Sorry, what? What about Pride and Prejudice? Basically the same thing. They want their daughters to increase their status. Yeah. Exactly. So, Customer of the Country has sort of a similar theme. We're actually going to read a little bit of, of Customer of the Country. Um, but I just want you to be thinking about the fact that there is this theme of you have to marry wealthy, you have to marry up, you have to focus on bettering, bettering yourself through wealth. Great. So, our learning targets for today. I will actively participate in a whole class discussion by formulating original insights in response to a guiding question and creating personal connections to the text as well as by composing and presenting my own thought-provoking questions. And I will actively listen and respectfully respond to others' commentary through agreement and elaboration or presentation of a counter-argument or textual evidence. Who can tell me what that means in their own words? It can be either one or both of them. For the first one, you want us to be engaged during discussion. You want us to create our own thinking in response to questions that you pose, and you also want us to connect it back to the text and then addition and do what you did by presenting more questions. And the second one that we're listening and responding, but being respectful and either agreeing and elaborating on what someone said, or we're presenting a counter-argument that has textual arguments we're not just saying that someone's wrong. Yeah. So what's a, what's a counter-argument? It's pretty self-explanatory. You can break it down a little more. You make a point, you make a point that is a degree point. Yeah, kind of like when we were talking about Facebook earlier, how someone presents an argument and then someone else is like, well, I think this. It's not really a valid, valid argument unless they present evidence for it, right? So we're going to be practicing that. And what I want us to do, I think, is there an extra copy? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Passage over there? Great. So we are just going to read this out loud. Do you want to have Robin? Does someone want to volunteer to start? Jennifer? All right. And I want you to read at least two sentences, but you can raising a prematurely wrinkled hand heavy with rings to defend the note which a languid bellboy had just brought in. Okay, I'm going to pause you for a second here. Uh, I want everyone to annotate too while we're going through it. Uh, either pick out keywords or ask questions and so you have something for this section. All right, you can continue. Uh, but her defense was as feeble as her protest and she continued to smile on her visitor while Miss Sprague with a turn of her quick young fingers, possessed herself of the missive and withdrew to the window to read it. Uh, I guess it's meant for me. She really threw over her shoulder at her mother. Did you ever, Miss Heaney? Miss Spratt murmured with, a de with deprecating pride. Mrs. Heaney, a stout, professional-looking woman in a waterproof, her rusty veil thrown back, and a shabby alligator bag at her feet followed the mother's glance with a good-humored approval. I'll never met with a lovelier form, she agreed, answering with a spirit rather than the letter of her hostess's inquiry. Mrs. Sprague and her visitor 
were enthroned in two heavy gilt armchairs in one of the private drawing rooms of the Hotel Stentorian. The Sprout rooms were known as one of the Louis suites, and the drawing room walls above their wainscoting of highly varnished mahogany were hung with salmon pink damas is it damas? Mm -hmm. and adorned with oval portraits of Marie Antoinette and the Princess de Laval.
to share their answer, just like their initial answer. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I think she might be conditioned to behave the way she does based not only on her surroundings, but also her upbringing. Because it sounds like, if I'm reading this right, she lives in a hotel. And really, that's expensive. And if you can afford to live in a hotel, and you're kind of waiting on hand and foot for like your whole life, you kind of can get the attitude that she has. So, you guys don't have to raise your hands. Something tells me that her mom is always in her business just by the fact that it's always the two of them and then the way that um, is seen and then her mom kind of interact with each other. Like, I don't know if she's like this everyday baby. How would you guys react if your mom was all in your business, like how you said? Have you had experience with that? Because I know I have. <laughs> My mom is. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we were younger, I mean, that was probably a big problem. Probably reacted embarrassingly similar. Do, okay. any, do any of you guys have, like, nieces or nephews that are young? That may be after a little brownie sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Jill says yeah. 